Hello, in this video I'm going to explain the induced EMF in the electric fields, which is basically Faraday's law rehashed. So in Faraday's law, it states that if we have a change in um, magnetic flux over a change in time, we will get a EMF created, um, which is, that will be negative EMF. Um, or negative the negative change in uh, magnetic flux divided by the mag divided by the change in time is equal to the EMF created. Um, now, if you remember, the EMF is essentially a potential across a specific distance, which can give us this: an electric field is equal to the EMF divided by some distance, which is equal to this is distance, which is equal to uh, uh, the EMF divided by 2 pi r in a loop. And this is a circular loop, obviously. This is r. So, essentially, um, we can get what um, the electric field in a loop is, is from um, the change in magnetic flux or the change in time, and if we have the radius, um, which allows us to write the integral of the electric field over ds, ds in this case is little, little pieces of this loop all the way around, is equal to the negative change in flux divided by d time. And this is essentially also Faraday's law. So is this, so is this. So basically, all that uh, the that I'm trying to explain real quick is since um, this is a section in two of my books and I really don't understand why is that um, an electric field is created in a wire or conductor um, loop when there's a changing magnetic flux and that's because there is an EMF created and there is a current created and the current follows the electric field etc. So I feel it is exceedingly obvious but it's in several of my books, so I'm just going over it. Um, another little thing is the electric field. Um, this is all. This all comes from manipulating these equation, three equations up here, is equal to the negative um, two pi r dt, which is the change in time divided by the change in magnetic flux, which is equal to negative um, r db on, um, divided by 2 dt and this is because magnetic flux is equal to ba and the b, um, this is area and magnetic field and this is um, when the magnetic field is going straight through the loop and that is also equal to pi r squared. So this r gets canceled, and this squared gets canceled, and this pi gets canceled, and this pi gets canceled. So you end up with br on top. But because we're taking the change in, it's the change in magnetic field. So since this is the change in flux, this is also the change in magnetic field. There you go. This also will give you the electric current inside of the field. Um, one other thing that a lot of um, um, the two books that has this go over is that it's not a conserved electric field. What that means is there's not, um, for example, if we have a charge, there's you know an electric field coming out in all directions. So if we make a, there's going to be a net. Um, the sum of all electric fields will equal zero at that point. However, in this case, the electric field will be inside the conductor and it'll come out at specific uh, intervals and it's considered a non-conserved electric field. Um, essentially, um, it's non-conserved because it is required um, to have a change in time and a change in magnetic flux. So it's required for motion to be happening. Then once it stops, the electric field disappears. It's not, um, it doesn't maintain its electric field. It just works for a while, then it stops. 
So it's just work being done and then it stops. It doesn't just maintain this potential that it has. Anyways, I hope that explains um, the induced EMF and some of the electric fields. I recommend looking at Faraday's law and Lenz's law because that actually explains the subject matter. This is just a quick uh, explanation of how the electric field works inside of it. Remember, the electric field is required for and is required to have a change in flux, so it's not conserved. And uh, like I said, it's just Faraday's law rehashed. Um, hope this helps some of you. If not, look at Faraday's law, try to figure it out, comment, and I could respond. Thank you.